you. I'd like to start off by um, just very quickly sharing with you an experience that I had about a week and a half ago. My daughters and I were doing some grocery shopping. And all of a sudden, as we were doing grocery shopping, I started to realize that I couldn't quite see out of my left eye. It was as if I had looked at one of those bright spotlights, which is exactly like this right now. But the light continued in my eye and didn't go off, even though I blinked several times and waited for it to clear. In fact, it actually got worse. It moved from that very bright light in which I could see the starburst to it being replaced by a shade of gray, and then finally, black. Now, it's kind of scary because here I am looking at people and I could see the silhouette, but not quite the complete person. The funny thing is the brain does really strange things to you when you're in a state of panic. So the first thing I thought about was, oh, TED talk in two weeks time, alama, right? <laughs> and then, then the next thing that I thought about was my favorite TED talk, which is uh, Jill Bolte Taylor. Oh, stroke, oh no, right? So because of the work that uh, we currently do in applied neuroscience, I did know that that was a possibility. So I will share with you the rest of my story later. But one last thing that came to my head before the rest uh, of the uh, incidences happened was, if this truly was my last day of sight, have I really done anything significant with that gift of vision? And that was something that I folded into my talk today, which is called the sacredness of a symbol. Now, how many of us feel that we have anything in common with these individuals on screen? Albert Einstein, Mother Teresa, Nadia Comaneci, who at the age of 14 won a gold uh, at the gymnastics. Perfect 10. First time ever, perfect 10. Bilal Rajan, who at the age of 8 was uh, commissioned as a UN ambassador for his work in raising funds for children that were less well off than he was. Um, Minister Mentor Lee Kuan Yew. How many of us feel that we have anything in common with them? Well, maybe, maybe they had people who were supporting them and saying, you are destined for great things. Maybe they, they had people who were surrounding them saying, you know, we're going to give you a supportive environment so that you can do everything that you were meant to do. Okay. But how many of us have that? I think the sad thing, the sad reality is that that's probably not as common as it should be. But we have one thing in common with all of these great people. And that one thing is that we share 24 hours. 24 hours. So what is the difference between them and us then? Well, I think the difference between them and us is the way in which they've actually used the 24 hours. That they do amazing uh, things during the 24 hours were fantastic opportunities available to them during their 24 hours that isn't present in our 24? Maybe not. I think it was their ability to use the 24 hours in every single moment to find out what exactly is it that I'm called to do. Even in the most mundane, there's a message in there for me. You know, there is um, a guy by the name of Professor Ludwig Wittgenstein. And if you don't know who he is, I would really encourage you to go and Google him, because he's actually written quite a number of phenomenal things. One really profound thing he said was, the aspects of things that are most important to us are hidden because of their simplicity and their familiarity. I think that some of us think that we probably cannot ascribe or aspire to greatness because our lives are so ordinary. And yet I think it is in that very specific ordinariness that we can actually achieve greatness. All of us have a story to tell. We all do, and all our stories are different because of the different people that we meet in our lives, the different places we have been, the people who have supported us, the people who have put us down. All of that has a message. And all of that has a message that needs to be spoken because probably that could change the world. So what is me and my story for the world? Do I have a sacred truth that needs to be told, a sacred song that needs to be sung? I believe we all do. And I believe that there is no such thing as an accident even for those of us who may have been told that our birth on Earth was an accident. 
I believe that for every problem that exists in the world, someone has a solution. Do you believe that too? Yes? That someone may actually be in this audience, or it could be in a global audience. But we will never know until their stories are told. So here are two probably practical things for us to be able to get the stories out. The first thing is encourage the telling of stories. Encourage people to tell you their stories. And as you encourage them to tell you their stories, what are you encouraging them to tell you? Well, things like, who am I? Why am I here? What is my gift to the world? And why is that important to me? So as you encourage these stories, it, it lends them voice. And then tell your story too. Tell your story to people around you so that it gets clearer for you each day. Aisha, um, who is actually Ashik's sister, nine-year-old Aisha, has a little tag. And she says, tell me about drawing and art. Yes, Aisha? So all of us are going to tell you about drawing and art later. We'll make some time to come in and talk to you. Because Aisha, maybe your drawing and your art one day can show us in the world how similar we are as compared to how different we are. Maybe we're all connected to the spirit of aspiration, to greater values, and to things that can really make a difference for all of us. So, so support the telling of stories and listen to the stories that are being told as well. And the other thing that I think would be really good for us to be able to do to distill that little voice is to keep a journal. Um, you know, as I thought, well, if this was my last day of sight, what would I have achieved? And at that point in time, I thought, oh my goodness, nothing much. <laughs> because I guess for as long as I can remember, um, you know, I've kept a journal of sorts, but it wasn't very conscientious. And as human beings, we have very short-term memories, don't we? So if you do keep a journal, you'll probably start to see the, the, the themes in your life that really made a difference to you and that really had meaning for you. When you do a journal, do two things. Analyze what you have written. Look at your thoughts, because your thoughts do matter. And as what quantum physicists are now telling us, thoughts are matter. And just like any bits of, of matter, um, a chair, a table, it interacts with the environment. So your thoughts interact with the environment too. So listen to your thoughts. The second thing is listen to your heart. Scientists are now telling us that the heart has resources um, and wisdom that the mind could never, ever be privy to. So listen to your heart. Your heart has a message for you. Um, now, it's really interesting. I'm going to round off to, to tell to start off. Uh, I started off by telling you the story of what happened to my eye. We haven't quite figured out yet what's happening. Uh, so on Monday, I'm going to do a couple more tests. Um, but yes, the really interesting thing is I was talking during the break, and you know how, how ideas are connected. So I was talking du during the break, and I spoke to Sam's mom, Reshmi. Hello. And here she was telling me that, oh, do you know that there's a recipe for restoring sight? And she started to tell me about how her 82-year-old father-in-law had his sight restored after, after having this recipe done. So for those of you who want to have greater vision, go look for Reshmi later. <laughs> so your story and her story could possibly make a difference in my life. Now, why is it important for us to know our stories? Because knowing our stories will help us to understand our purpose in life. Is purpose important? Absolutely. How many of us are interested in eradicating poverty in the world? Yeah, a whole lot of us. And do you know what? What we have found is that if you accumulate a lot of wealth, but you don't have purpose in your life, that leads to a different type of poverty. So wealth minus purpose equals to poverty. And if we want to start really eradicating poverty in the world, let's look within. Now, coming back to this, the, this whole thing about the sacredness of the simple, if we can look at the everyday moments of our life and make something out of that, we will probably come to a space in which the ordinary becomes very sacred, and the sacred then becomes very ordinary. And that is a fantastic gift to be able to give to the world. So therefore, look for the simple. Know that from the path of the simple, there will be the opportunity for us to find purpose, and with purpose, 
that will lead us to peace and that will make that difference in the world. So I wish you all a very rich life filled with meaning, with purpose and with wealth. Thank you.